Hello, I'm Solitaire Townsend, and this is the Solution Survey. Please download this presentation from SlideShare and use these slides to further your own climate action. They've been released under a Creative Commons license. And this research and these insights are brought to you by the Futera Solutions Union, a new nonprofit dedicated to culture change to help stop climate change and also by Ipsos, one of the world's largest market research firms. Now this survey spans 27 countries and nearly 20,000 people and it's the largest survey of its kind in the world and it's asking does the world believe we can still solve climate change? Because Today, it feels like we're standing at a crossroads between disaster and crisis and breakdown and the world on fire on one side and transformation and technology and climate justice and ways to live and work together in a way that is fit for the future on the other. And we're not quite sure which way it's going to go. We all care about climate change. Well, 73% of us do. They, they, that's the percentage who agree that climate change is fairly or very important to them personally. But we tend to underestimate how much other people care, with only 63% of us agreeing that climate change is very or fairly important to the average person in our country. You might find that your friends, neighbours and colleagues care more than you think. And we care more than we did. Well over 50% of people in the world, and in some countries pushing up to over 60 and nearly 70% of people, saying that climate change has become a more important issue to them in the last few years. This is an accelerating, growing concern for people all across the world. But the big question we set out to ask is, can we still win? Actually, the world population is more optimistic than you might think. 17% of people in the world are what we're calling soft, strong optimists. They believe humanity is able to reduce climate change and we are going to do successfully. So we have all the science and technology we need and humanity will step up and do what's needed. The vast majority of people in our survey are soft optimists. They believe that humanity's government needs, we are able to reduce climate change, but it's unclear whether we as people will choose to do so. It's a good news. Overall, we've got a worldwide population of people who think that we can win. And in fact, in some countries, that's quite significant. So in um, Latin America and Asia Pacific, these are some of the regions most optimistic about our ability to reduce climate change. If you look over on the right hand side at that G8 countries down at 53%, that's actually being pulled down by Russia, where there was actually quite low levels of optimism. But there was, of course, another side. 20% of people are what we call defeatists or the defeated. They think that we've got what we need, we've got the science, we've got the technology to reduce climate change, but human beings are not going to do it. These are almost like people pessimists. We've got what we need, but perhaps we haven't got the willpower that we need. And if you look up towards the top, you'll see only 4% of people are deniers. Now, they might be quite noisy. They are on my social media channels, but actually overall, they're a tiny percentage of the actual worldwide belief around climate change. Denial is dead. Now, I've been working in sustainability and climate for 20 years. And the number in this whole survey that shocked me and worried me the most is that 11% of the world are now fatalists. Humanity cannot reduce climate change. That's 11%, that's a significant proportion of the worldwide population, remember across 27 countries, who think it's game over, it's job done, there is no future, climate change is coming and there's nothing we can do about it. That is a very shocking number and something which we're going to dig into a little bit more. So there's the whole picture, our strong optimists, our soft optimists, our defeatist or defeated, our fatalists and our deniers. This is a global picture across the world. Let's dig into what it means country by country.
So for simplicity for sake, we've, ju we've asked a different question here, which is, you know, it's too late to do anything about climate change. We can't fix it. And you'll notice that red, that red section, that red piece of the pie are those fatalists. And you can see in some countries that that fatalistic feeling that we can't do anything about climate change is a really significant part. Look at India, look at Malaysia, you know, Mexico. This is these are really quite quite large numbers. And then in some other countries, you see that 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 fatalistic attitude is actually quite a small part of the population, such as Sweden and the USA. Now, if you thought you saw a trend there, you're right. Optimism and pessimism correlates with economic development. Now, this is a categorization by the United Nations um, in terms of developed, emerging and in transition economies. Perhaps, you know, we might call it the global north and the global south. And you'll see here that, that many of the most fatalistic countries are actually in emerging economies, whereas most of the optimistic countries are in the so-called developed countries. Now, is that because people are seeing more technology, more solutions? Or is it in, in, in the global north? Or is it in the global south? People are experiencing climate change right now. If you're living in an economy which doesn't have the infrastructure to protect against extreme weather events, although whether any of us do anymore, then perhaps climate change can feel more like a current reality rather than in um, more developed nations where it can feel like a future threat. And that's not all. Even within countries, those who have access to a lower education or who have a lower income are less likely to feel optimistic about climate change. A low income is designated as below the average in the country and a low education is below average in the country and in some countries a low education means below secondary level of education. So we see here again significantly lower levels of optimism amongst those who are poorer and those who have less access to education. There's one more gap I need to share with you and it's the biggest gap of all and it is amongst the young. One in five young people globally believe it's too late to fix climate change versus only 12% of the 50 plus. By the way, young here is designated as anyone under 35. So one in five of the under 35s believe it's too late to fix climate change. That's a 66% difference. And that's huge in terms of mental health, in terms of well-being. So let's let's look into this a little bit more and you'll see again in some countries young fatalists make up a significant proportion of fatalists overall this is a dark background because this is our most depressing slide you can see that in some countries um you're looking here at south africa you're looking at um uh at some of latam middle east you can see that young fatalists actually are the majority of the fatalists about climate change in their country. That you know, this is well beyond that one in five in China, for example, um, and in Indonesia. Here we're talking about um, about thirty or forty percent of young people being fatalistic. So we have this new inequality of attitude where your country of origin, your education level, your income and your age are determining whether you feel that it's still possible to do anything about climate change or whether you've given up. Now, arguably eco-anxiety, particularly amongst young people, is rising as fast as carbon dioxide around the world. We've, we've, we've heard of these consequences and perhaps these consequences have been more studied in those countries where eco-anxiety and fatalism are the lowest. And in fact, if we studied eco-anxiety in some of these marketplaces, which our survey is showing where they are rampant and where that fatalism is a much larger um, percentage of population than in some of the European and North American countries, we would find that eco-anxiety worldwide is a much bigger problem than we're estimating. And why? Why are we so fatalistic? Now, some would argue that if you read the science, then of course you'd be fatalistic. Climate change is real, it's present, it's growing, and we're not on the right track. 
However, we also are aware that there are so many solutions that we have what we need. And the science also shows us that it is possible within our lifetimes to get this under control. But worldwide, people are not hearing that solution story. 62% of people agree that they hear much more about the negative impacts of climate change than they do about progress towards reducing climate change. We have a solutions gap. We have necessary growing coverage of the problem as we should. This is important and it's real and it's scientific, but it is only half of the story. And all regions are agreeing that they're hearing more about the negative consequences than they are about progress and action to combat it. And it's not just in our news media. If you spend any time online, particularly in social media and in meme culture and in the shareable content, you'll see a lot of a lot of jokes like this, a lot of nihilistic, fatalistic, heavily trending. Many of these um, uh, uh, memes here have been shared hundreds of thousands, if not millions of times. Many of them have become almost iconic in terms of uh, in terms of the online conversation. And this is what, of course, young people across the world are not just consuming, but also creating and sharing this sense that there simply isn't a tomorrow. And does it matter? Now, I could do a whole speech about this. <laughs> so I've written books on why it matters. But quite simply, on the right hand side, that's a virtuous cycle. If we feel optimistic, you we know that you're more likely to take action. You know, you can also take action if you're angry, you can also take action if you're rageful, it's not just optimism, but even anger and rage implies that you still believe something is possible. Being Going out on the streets and protesting about a lack of action on climate change makes you believe that, means that you believe that action would actually make a difference. That isn't innately hopeful, and that drives you to take climate action, which means you see more solutions happening, which creates more storage stories of hope, which generate more people feeling optimistic and taking action. Or the vicious cycle of fatalism, where feeling fatalistic leads to ennui and to apathy, because if nothing can be done, then what's the point of doing anything? That leads to there being less action in the world, more stories of doom leading to more fatalism. This is why attitude matters and why fatalism can be fatal. How do we close this solutions gap? Well, we asked people what was actually making them feel that think something could be done. And new technologies, 68% of people are agreeing that that makes them feel optimistic about progress. Solar power, wind power, electric vehicles, these are showing how we can reduce climate change. But there is much less enthusiasm around the action of businesses and regional government. So only 32% of people agree that businesses are leading the effort to reduce climate change. And 27 agree that regional government are doing the same. So we got to see our businesses and our government stepping up to being the solutions creators that technology is already seen as being. And this is global. Um, whilst in some countries there is slightly more enthusiasm about business and about government, it in no region does it reach the positivity that we have about technology. And we know that how wonderful our technology is, how fantastic solar panels and renewable energy and electric cars are, they require that investment by business and they require the structures and the infrastructure from government and that policy making to actually allow the technologies to happen and we also know that technology is only one part of the solution and there are multiple other ways including regulation that are required to to solve climate change so we need to tell the solution story and that starts with actually setting and creating the solutions and there are millions of stories of the solutions, and we now know there are billions of people who need to hear them. Stories of invention, stories of activism, stories of courage, of new technology and of old wisdoms. They are stories that can fill our lungs with hope and our arms with strength for the work that desperately needs doing. And here at the Futera Solutions Union, we believe that to save life on earth, we have to believe that we can. 
please do take a look at the methodology and how we undertook this survey, download these slides and use them. And please thank you for all the work that you are doing and that others are doing to help make the solutions real.